Good morning. I'm Gregory Johnson, minister of the Shelby Valley Church of Christ. The Church of Christ is here is located at 10334 Caney Highway, US 23 South Pikeville, Kentucky. I like to give that occasionally because I find people um, in nearby communities and maybe even in nearby counties like to come and, uh, and be with us and I'd like to know for them to know where we're located or if you live in another state and are traveling through, I'd like for you to know where we're located. Um, welcome to everyone here this morning and to you that are with us on WPRG TV, Facebook and YouTube. It's good to have you with us and I'm constantly hearing about more and more people that are uh, watching the sermons and our, our service on Sunday morning. So it's good to have you with us. I thank you for being there. Uh, I hope my good friend Ronnie Newsom's watching this morning, he and his wife, and uh, he tells me he watches. And uh, then uh, um, Beatrice Newsom, my good friend that I taught school with years ago, she passed away recently and uh, her son and her daughters were telling me that she watched our program faithfully every Sunday. And uh, I loved her and I loved that family. Uh, also, uh, recently, my daughter Brittany's best friend, Lainey Harris, passed away. Uh, that touched my heart, both of those instances did. Uh, when you know people, you know, when they leave this world, part of your life is gone. And I'm, I will miss Lainey. As a matter of fact, we shared, shared the same birthday, March the 2nd. And uh, I always remembered that. But um, uh, so does Wayne Robinson and I share the same birthday. And um, uh, it's, it's good... Uh, to know that people are watching and wanting to hear God's word. I'm not important. The only importance I have is that I bring God's word. And I do my best to do it with love to people that I know and to perfect strangers. I care about you. If I don't, that's the spirit of God working in me. And I want you to know that God loves you, that I love you. And if I don't have that spirit and that love in me, I'm none of his. And I want to be God's servant. I want to be his son. And I want to live a life that he would be pleased with. When I pray each morning, i always mindful and I try to pray that God will bless me to do his will. And that he would bless me to glorify him and to glorify Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. Uh, I want to... Uh, Thank you for being here today. I will do my best to bring God's word. And believe me uh, when I say I have no problem with you confirming the things, the principles I give you about love and God and salvation. I want you to because there are people preaching and teaching things that are not according to God's word. I don't know why some just... Uh, out of tradition or family believe that way um, but your soul depends on what you do with the word not your, what your mother or daddy or brother or sister it depends on what you do with God's word are you trying to understand it do you want to apply it to your life do you want to make heaven now, you know just a feel good feeling is not fulfilling God's will Jesus says, not everyone that saith me, Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. I need to be concerned with what God's will is you need to. A lot of people always have, for whatever reason, preconceived ideas about worship and about God and salvation. Uh, you need to see if that aligns with what God's word says because some of this that's being practiced out there in the name of religion is not according to the word. And I fear that they will be in the re rejected in the day of judgment. I don't want that to happen to my friends. I don't want it to happen to anyone. And it doesn't have to. We need to go into the word and we need to do the will of the Father. We have a loving Father. And he's made a way of sinful man to come out and to come back to him. And uh, 
That's why I preach, is to help. I don't do it for money or fame. I do it to get God's word out and to try to help people. Uh, and it is difficult. People are so entrenched in some of these false beliefs and, and doctors, doctrines that are in error. It, it's difficult for them to see the truth and, and to come out and, and to come and walk uh, with God. I pray that you can. Uh, I love you, and let's begin the service today with a prayer. Heavenly Father, we lovingly and come to you in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Come through him. We come before your throne, Father. We humbly ask that you forgive us of any sin or shortcomings in our life, that you make us whole, make us pure. And we know that the blood of Jesus can do that, that it can cleanse us, uh, that if you've never obeyed, that you can be purified and become a new creature, a new person, and leave that old life that you were living. We thank you for that ability to do so. We thank you for your son, Jesus. We thank you for your great love. We ask your blessing this day on all that are watching with us, and I ask, Father, not only to bless them, but bless their families, Father. Give them a good day, a good night, and give them a desire in their heart to glorify you and glorify Jesus and to do your will so that they can make heaven. And we know that's what you want. Your will is that none should perish, as Peter writes. And we know that you want us to come out of sin and come back to you and to, and to live with you, serve you, and walk with you. We ask that you guide us in that. Everyone that's watching this day and everyone that is here with us on our Sunday mornings, bless them to walk with you, folks. Bless our nation, our leaders, leaders throughout the world, guide them in righteousness that we might have peace. Bless young men and women that serve this nation. Bless God and protect them through this day, this night, through their tour, and bring them home safe to their families, Father. Bless those with healing that have been injured in war. Comfort those families that have lost loved ones in war and have mercy on their souls, I pray, Father. Father, bless the sick here at Shelby Valley and those that we've been requested to pray for from other places and for here. We ask your healing of them. But we not only ask, Father, for healing, we thank you for the healing that you've given. Thank you for the babies that you've blessed with safe delivery. And bless their moms. Continue to watch over these babies and their families. Father, bless me as I go into your word that I do it according to your will. Bless the hearer of that word this morning. Father, bless all that are with us. We humbly ask these things and we praise you in Jesus' name. And amen. I was thinking on maybe a, an, another subject matter this morning, and uh, <clears throat> but as I was either listening to TV or, or checking the news on the phone, it talked about some kind of something that was a surprise, and I did a sermon on that one time, surprise. So I thought I would go into that subject matter again today, and we would talk about Surprises, you know, a few years ago, well, 19, or 2020, COVID came along. We were going along through life and dealing with the problems, and we thought we had a lot of problems until that came along, and that was a big surprise for everyone. Uh, and it's, it's uh, amazing when you look back and you realize how things were, and then all of a sudden, Many things in our lives changed. We couldn't go visit people. You know, I, as a minister, try to visit people in the hospital and when they're in need and pray with them and for them. And uh, I couldn't do that, uh, or not like I did. I did go for a, few, a couple of cases, but a lot of times they would not let you in. So, But that was a big surprise to all the world, and we lost millions of people during that. Uh, but... Uh, I, I remember saying in that sermon, one of the most useless things there was was a, was a, <clears throat> a calendar or a, pl or a plan for 2020, getting ready to go into it. A lot of times we plan trips or plan this or that. And even in the church, we plan outings and giveaways and revivals. And all of that was changed. It was a useless thing to have a plan because our plans got changed. There was a big, big surprise go on, uh, uh, that went on. You know, there's an old adage in life, 
uh, life is full of surprises. Well, it certainly is, is full of surprises. Uh, you know, if you, a lot of times, you know, we come up with words or things and we, we think we know the meaning, we, we use it, but if you, <clears throat> and most people probably do understand the, the meaning of surprise. It's an unexpected or some kind, sometimes an astonishing event fact or thing it is a surprise in your life when it appears uh, and there are, are many such surprises and unexpected things we lose friends we lose family members and it comes as, as a shocking surprise and uh, astonishing uh, things that happen in our life and there are many things we're going to discuss a few things in this life like the pandemic that was a was a uh, great surprise. Well, there's other things, big events that have happened throughout history that are, are a surprise. And there are many things in the Bible that was surprising that they happened the way they did. And <clears throat> when you read those events in the Bible or in life, sometimes you didn't think of it, about it as being a surprise or uh, something that happened unexpected. But they do, and they, they have. Uh, you know, you go back all the way to World War II, the attack on Pearl Harbor. That was a surprise attack. We were not expecting it. Uh, matter of fact, if, if some of the radar of, that we saw had not been misinterpreted, maybe the destruction would not have been so bad. I have been there, and uh, I think it was the Arizona that was sunk there, and still there's still oil residue coming up from that ship or it was a few years ago when I was there. But um, to see that and to see the hundreds of men and women that died on that ship, you know, when I stepped into the room there, they had all their names displayed. And it brought tears to my eyes to think that all of them died suddenly and uh, in this surprise attack. And all I could say was thank you because it really touched my heart that they had given their lives for you and I. They didn't know they were going to at that time, but it did happen. It was truly a bad surprise for them and for, for our country that led us into World War II with the Japanese. The attack on the World Trade Center on 9-11, 2001, was a, a horrible and unexpected and a terrible surprise upon this country. Uh, I know I was coming up Interstate 95, coming out of Florida, been down there to a bank meeting, and uh, Sherry Newcomb, the lady that ran the hospital for me, she, uh, she called me and said, Greg, there's something horrible going on. So I turned on the radio and began to hear about this surprise attack that morning and this surprise change in my life and your life that was going to come from this event that morning. Uh, there were new laws written, laws changed. We did a lot of things in this country. It made travel more difficult. <coughs> uh, but, and then there's economic disasters. There was a great, the, the, the stock market crash of, of uh, the late 20s and the devastating devastation that brought. And then in 2008 and nine, we had a we had a very unexpected um, economic event in this country. Uh, companies I had dealt with, uh, you know, with small investments, nothing really big at that time, but uh, they they don't even exist today because they had uh, made some risky loans, I guess, and and many of them went out of business. Uh, people lost their homes, uh, lost their jobs. Uh, uh, I know I was talking to a young lady in a mall, and she was telling me about her husband losing his job, and they just bought a new house. And said, I don't know what we're going to do. She said, I just, we just have the one salary now. I, I thought to myself, I know what you're going to do. Sadly, you're going to lose your home. I didn't say that to her. It wouldn't have hurt her feelings at all, but I knew what was going to happen. It was pretty easy to predict. If you don't have the money coming in, you can't make a $600 payment a month or a thousand. So that's, that was a very 
unexpected thing, and it, I'm sure it was a surprise to them when they lost when he lost his job and she lost her house. But uh, but we can one thing about surprises, we can learn from it. Uh, we can know that if we're blessed to live, there are going to be things that are going to happen unexpected. There are going to be surprises in our life, and we uh, we we can know that we have managed like the pandemic. You and I that have made it through it, we know that that these bad things can happen. And one thing that we can learn from it is we need to be prepared in this world, but we need to have our soul prepared. We need to be spiritually prepared. We need to be right with God and be prepared. Then whatever comes, we can deal with, whether it be life or death. Uh, but let's go into the Bible and let's look at it few surprise events that happened there. Uh, uh, I like this for young people. Young people need to, <clears throat> they need to gain all the wisdom they can to prepare themselves for life in, in education and then life events. You know, a lot of young people, they, uh, most young people, they find someone that they care about or are attracted to. It usually starts out as a physical attraction, but as you get to know people, you develop love for them, and young men and women do that. But you need to, you need to be mindful. Don't be totally swept away. Be mindful. Will this work out? Do we have similar interests? Can we get along with each other? Can, and you know, there's a good example over in in Genesis chapter 29. Some good thoughts. Um, Jacob there. Uh, we see him taking a wife. He made a made an agreement with the, the wo woman's father that he would work seven years, and if he worked seven years, then this this woman's father would would give him uh, permission to marry her. Well, he works the seven years, and the wife he got is not the wife he expected, so he has to work another seven years to get Rebecca that he loves and he did but because he, he loved her but and if you go that long you evidently are deeply in love if you do something that and that was the custom and the practice at that time but the point i'd like for you to get is do you know the person you're going to marry you need to know them you need to like i said do you have similar interests do you get along can you reason problems out you need to know that before you marry and not get in a marriage that you can't handle, that you can't deal with or you're miserable in. You need someone that you truly love. You know, Samson's relationship with Delilah in the Bible in Judges 16, you know, uh, was a terrible situation. Ended up costing Samson his life. And uh, that was a surprising turn of events for him, I'm sure. In this, I think about the, what happened in the days of Noah. He spends hundreds of years building the ark as God had told him so he could save him and his family. And all that time, people around him were living wickedly. There, there were only those souls found that God was going to save. The rest of the world was wicked. And they were living day after day in wickedness. And then <clears throat> suddenly it rained. Uh, best I could tell, it hadn't rained before that. And water came down from the heavens and came up out of the earth. And the whole world was flooded. And the waters lifted Noah and his family in the ark, lifted them up. And all the world perished. That was a surprising thing to those people, you, you can be sure. I can just picture them. Uh, probably some of them trying to get into the ark and couldn't. God, had, God himself closed the door on the ark when he was ready to save Noah and his family. So, uh, you know, God had seen the wickedness of man, and he said, I'm going to destroy it. He was, a, he was dissatisfied with man and said they were evil continually. Are we that way? I certainly hope not, and I try not to be, and I hope you don't, that you don't want to be. Uh, then I think of another event that happened that was a surprise to everyone around them but God and David. David goes out to take on the giant Goliath. Uh, he was making fun of uh, 
God's children and the, the soldiers. And, and uh, David raises up and says, I'll go out and fight him. And basically, well, not basically, no one had any faith that he would survive that. He was just a little shepherd boy. But he said, God that delivered me out of the paw of the lion, the paw of the bear will deliver me in, in this. And so David goes out. He doesn't go out with a sword or a spear. He goes out with a sling, and he picks up five smooth stones out of the brook. He didn't need, need five. He just needed one. He goes out to face Goliath. Goliath was a tr tried and tested mighty warrior for the Philistines. He was over nine feet tall. He was a huge man and a powerful man that no one could go up against, they thought. But a little shepherd boy goes out and puts a, one smooth stone in his sling, and he lets it go. And the stone hits Goliath in the forehead and sinks into his head, and he falls. Now, you think the Philistines that were behind him getting ready to see him slaughter this little shepherd boy were not surprised when they saw their great warrior fall but that was God's power at work and what God means to happen will happen and it did in that case but this giant warrior that everybody thought this little shepherd boy had no chance again against uh, defeated him uh, so you know well, there's, you go into the New Testament, we see many surprising events happen. Um, uh, I guess when the angel came to the shepherds and told them that unto you is born this day in the city of David, a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. I'm sure that was, an was a surprising event because they were afraid when they saw the angel appear to them. So it was a shocking thing to them, but the angel had brought good news not only for those shepherds, but he brought good news for you and for me that we can be saved and have salvation uh, <clears throat> but uh, Jesus there in, in Matthew uh, 14 uh, Jesus had sent his disciples away and he, he comes to them walking up on the sea in, in the storm and uh, uh, I, I love that story you know Peter asked Lord if it be you can I come to you and, and and God said, uh, Jesus said, come. And Peter comes down out of the ship, and amazingly, he begins to walk toward the Lord on the sea. But he's like us and like mankind. We, uh, we can quickly fall away if we're not careful. Peter begins to look around him. He takes his eyes off the Lord and off the power of Jesus Christ and God. He looks around him, and he sees the sea boisterous or, or uh, troubled by the winds and the storm. And he becomes afraid and he begins to sink. And he reaches up and he says, Lord, save me. And Jesus reached down and, and saved him. He's reaching out to you this morning through this sermon. He wants to save you. Will you extend your hand and your heart out to the Lord and to God and find salvation this day? I pray that you will. And I pray that you'll come. Uh, because you serve you were in the presence. You were created by a loving God. And he wants to save you. And he's going to test you in the sinful things of this war world. He's going to test you in, in the lust of the world, the things we desire in the flesh. He's going to test you and try you. That the trial of your faith be much more precious than of gold that perish. So it will be tried with fire. Might be found under praise, honor, and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. If we can make it through the trials and troubles and temptations of this world and we'll hear the word and obey the word, then heaven's going to be our home. Uh, that's what we get. But he, he is, I, I use this comparison. He's like the Marines. They want a few good men. God wants children that love him and that will give up the things of their life and of this world to, and, and be tried and tested. And they're going to be. If you make heaven, we're going to make it through the trials of this world. We're going to hear the gospel, and we're going to obey it. And we're going to, then we're going to live it. We're going to deal with the things that come up in everyday life, where it be good or bad. We're going to try to do it. <clears throat> there are a lot of things that happen we can tell here from the Bible. And, well, 
the, one of the biggest ones. Can you imagine the awe on the faces of the people there that were present when Jesus told Lazarus to come forth from the grave? They'd never seen that happen before, but they did then. They saw a man that was dead come to life, and that was the power of God working through Jesus Christ, his son, and they did. There are many surprises in life, and there's a lot of surprise situations in the Bible, unexpected things that happen. How do, and how do I know that? Life is full of surprises. We know that's true from our own lives and some of the events I was talking about there. Uh, and one of the greatest surprises is going to come when the wor this world comes to an end. It's going to be unexpected. Uh, <clears throat> Peter says over in 2 Peter 3 and 10, said, but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. It's going to come unexpected. In the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall burn with fervent heat. And the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up. <clears throat> you know, the scripture tells us that the fool has said in his heart there is no God. <clears throat> What a surprise. What a surprise when that fool stands before the judgment seat of Christ. No wonder some of those are going to cry for the rocks and mountains to fall on them. Because, you know, even the fool's probably heard the word and knows that there's a heaven and a hell and he knows what's coming. He's not going to be a surprise because he did live the life. He didn't obey the gospel. And as... The, Paul wrote to the Thessalonians in 2 Thessalonians first chapter says, The Lord will come with his angels in flaming fire, taking vengeance upon them that know not God, fools, and obey not the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Fools again. They wouldn't accept it. And they, they wouldn't believe that God's word was true and that it would ring true in the end. You know, Hebrews 9 and 27 says that, <coughs> excuse me, 9 and 27 says that, uh, <clears throat> Let me get this correct. Uh, well, I'm going to have to turn there and get a, get a start. I've, quote this, I've quoted that scripture hundreds of times. Uh, and I guess as you get older, you begin to forget. But I don't like to do that. Uh, okay, yeah. It is appointed unto man once to die, and after that, the judgment. Pretty simple, wasn't it? But sometimes we get a little block. But <clears throat> that is very important. Uh, and there are going to be a lot of people that are going to be eternally shocked because if they've not lived and have not obeyed the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they're going to be hell bound. And that's going to be terrible. God doesn't want that. He also says in Peter, in, in 2 Peter uh, chapter 3, verse 9, says, that God's will is that none should perish. The Lord is not slack concerning his promises that some men count slackness, but is long-suffering toward us, with, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Change. Just quit living sinful and come to him through his son, Jesus Christ. He has, made that, he has made that way possible, and you can come, and, and I can come, and I did. Uh, this gospel was preached one Sunday morning, and I was sitting back there in the seat, and they played the, they didn't play the song, they sang the song, Only a Step. And I stepped out, and I've been stepping forward ever since. And I'm, I'm so thankful that, that the right turn of events happened, that I heard the word, and that I obeyed it. And I came down the aisle with tears in my eyes. I came to serve a living God, a loving God, through his son, Jesus Christ, my Savior. You can do the same thing. Uh, God loves you. He wants you to have salvation. Do you believe? Are you willing to change, repent? Will you confess Jesus as the Christ and be buried with him in baptism where you obtain remission of sins? That's what Peter told them on the day of Pentecost in Acts 2.37 and uh, 2.38. And on down below that it says, As many received his 
word were baptized. There are people that die, deny baptism. The Lord himself said, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. I don't have a right to change that. Neither do you. Neither does any other man get up and just tell you to pray some prayer or do some, something else. You're to hear, believe, repent, confess Jesus Christ, and be buried with him in baptism, and then enter into the battle of your life, walking as one of God's children and getting away from the lust of the world and staying holy as he is holy. I want you to do that. Please come. I'll assist you in being baptized into Christ. You out there, you come and be with us or call, and we'll try to set up your baptism and get you started. We love you, and God loves you. I pray you have a great and blessed day with no big, bad surprises. <clears throat> Ahem. <clears throat>